Well, massive stars go out with a bang, dying with a supernova explosion, but astronomers have for the first time found visual evidence that a star met its end with not one, but two explosions. Joining me now is Dr Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist at the ANU and part of our space chat every week. So this was basically, what, a theory? And now it's proven. Well, we think so, yeah. So, <clears throat> the, you know, big stars blow up usually in single explosions. What we have found is there's a, a ton of stars that are small old stars, something our sun will be in billions of years, and they blow up. Now, they're too big to blow up on their own mechanism because you need enough mass to, for essentially, for it. That's the fuel, right? So it's kind of like you put out a fire by extinguishing the oxygen. In space, you need mass to blow up. And so these stars somehow suck off mass from other stars and blow up. And we've always thought about, well, how do they actually go through this ignition process? And this image on the screen, what you're seeing is kind of these two distinct shells of blue and yellow. You can actually see there's two different layers of explosion that have actually pushed the stuff out into space. Right. So it's kind of like a small detonation triggers a bigger detonation in a core, very much similar to actually a nuclear bomb. You have a small explosion. Which that actually, then generates the Yeah, exactly. Light. That's right. So this is what has always baffled me. Let's just take our sun. I know yep. a bit more about that than all these other ones. <laughs> billions of years. It's burning for yep. billions of years. I know it's really big. I get that. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you have a fire, a really big fire. It lasts a few hours. How can anything last billions of years? Is it? Is it in case, like, it's, how can a fuel source last for billions of years? Yeah, and, and it really actually goes back to the principle of just nuclear energy, right? You know, the reason a lot of people like nuclear reactors is because fusion sources or fission sources can generate a lot of energy and a lot of heat for a very long time because they actually last for a very long time. They don't decay. So the idea is that even though you use up as an energy source, you actually generate new energy sources in that process. So when you smash atoms together and get this reaction out, you actually still create something heavier that you can burn later. And that's, that's so actually... it's a completely different concept to a piece of wood that is burning. Exactly, that's right. It goes from 100% to 90 it, it, Yeah, that's right, exactly. But okay. I mean, there is still an end. It's just that end is so delayed, and it's actually that, that accumulation of extra mass right. that eventually leads to stars dying. Now, we had Asteroid Watch for the Earth. Still a bit worried. Well, we're worried for the moon now. But we're worried for the moon, that's worried right. Worried for the moon. There's a comet heading for the sun. But we're not worried? We're not worried. We're, we're actually excited because this appears to be a comet not from our own solar system. Mm. So when we think about everything that we pretty much talk about in terms of asteroid watch and the comets, those are all in our own solar system. There's very few things. In fact, it's only the third that we've think, uh, uh, discovered that have come from another solar system. Because uh, you actually need enough energy to escape the, the pool of your star. Right. Think of like a right. polar so, so there's a point at which you... Because I'm thinking, what's the boundary? And the boundary yeah. would be at the point that one pool ends and another starts. Oh, oh pretty and much. You've got to have yeah. enough energy to get out. Otherwise, it sort of peters out and loops back. Yeah, it's very, exactly. That's right. And so, like everything's on a loop. In exactly. So, and that's okay. kind of always heading towards the sun. Right. So, if for some reason you have enough energy, you can get over that hump and then keep going. And so we think these are comets that were actually thrown out of another star system. And so so why, a really serious explosion. Or, or something, some sort right. of energy source. But it's, it actually it's, means... It's 12 kilometres wide. Yes, yeah, so which is relatively small. That would just burn up facing the sun? If it, yeah, so this one's not going to come near enough to actually burn up completely. Right. If it did go to near the sun, the sun would melt it millions of kilometres out. What, it, what is interesting enough is it's going to go near the sun and melt which means all of that ice kind of heats off into gas and we can measure its composition. So you actually get to measure the kind of composition of another sol solar system, mm. not from a very far away, but up close. But there'd be nothing that could ever come big enough that would just get melted by the sun. Yeah, I mean, un unless you're talking about an entire other star, which right. doesn't appear to happen, yeah, anything like this... That would is be gonna... problematic for a whole host that, of that would, Yeah, all there's right. a lot of issues <laughs> well before it gets near the sun. Uh, I feel like you're... You're sort of a bit of a frustrated political reporter because you keep putting politics on the <laughs> now. Growing talk um, that space needs to be a pillar of all. Because, I mean, let's put it this way. Yep. In 30, 40 years, maybe sooner, is if you control, if you're the most powerful space nation, will you be the most powerful defence nation? Yes, right. without a doubt. Sooner than and, that even? Probably. Okay. And, and, in fact, it's already slipping that way. And that's actually one of the worries that we people have had about this breakup between Trump and Musk, 
will it actually affect the US status in space? Because so much is relied on with SpaceX yeah. and private. Exactly, that's right. right. And, and you know, China is not slowing down, they're speeding up. Mm. And you know, all, if all those nuclear subs that you would build actually still need satellites yeah. to know where they're going and communication. And, that, and our dependency is only growing on that. So uh, there are groups, including by the, the former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, who are slowly, growingly saying, we really actually yeah. have to pay attention to this. Every, I just think of so many different elements of TV, anything yeah. from um, Bond movies. I, I remember an old Inspector Gadget episode. There's always just, a space weapon that just goes fump and everything else is irrelevant. They unveil it and they yeah. go, well, they control the world now. It might not happen that suddenly, I guess. Not that suddenly, but it, it's, it's a slow roll, right? It's okay. a slow roll of power. You know, they, in the 40s, you want to dominate the air from the military aspect. You need to dominate space. You might be space. in defence one day. What do you reckon? Well, I think that, you know, this is why groups like Defence Command and Australia Space Command and Space Force exist, because it's not... They're going to hoover up people like you? Well, I think they're trying to hoover up anyone they can okay. get. And, you know, you need good people to work on this aspect. There you go. If you need to help save Australia, Brad Tucker is here to help. Otherwise, you'll find him each week on Space Watch. Thank you. Thanks.